now that we have proved a very powerful theorem that is the riemann lebesgue theorem we can get several consequences for free i am going to start listing them one by one most of the proofs are trivial so what i will do is i will just indicate how to prove them and leave the details to you so let me just list them as corollaries corollary 1 let f from a b to r be a bounded function bounded function with only a finite set finite set of discontinuities continuities then f is riemann integrable this is because any finite set is of course a set of measure zero so there is really nothing to prove corollary 2 so let ab be a closed interval be a closed interval and cd be a subset of ab okay now we define we define chi cd this is called the indicator or characteristic function characteristic function of cd this can be defined more generally for all any subset but i'm just defining it for closed intervals for the time being this is by definition one if so let me put of x if x is an element of the closed interval cd and is zero otherwise so this is a function whose value is 1 precisely at the points of cd and 0 elsewhere okay then then chi cd is riemann integrable okay now the proof of this is just one line proof the set of discontinuities the set of discontinuities of chi cd chi cd is a subset of these two points c comma d just these two points are the only possible places where this function can be discontinuous so it follows from the previous thing that says that any bounded function with only a finite set of discontinuities is automatically riemann integrable so i'm going to stop writing corollary and just write a numeral because it saves time the product the product of two riemann integrable functions riemann integrable functions is riemann integrable so let's see a proof of this the proof is not hard okay so of course i must write where these functions are defined f from ab to r and g is also from ab to r okay now proof so obviously f into g is bounded is bounded now the discontinuity set dfg the set of points where the product fg is discontinuous is of course going to be a subset of the set of discontinuities of f df union the set of discontinuities of g note i do not write equal to i just write subset subset think y think y that this will just be a subset hence dfg is a set of measure 0 is a set of measure 0 because df and dg are sets of measure 0 sets of measure 0 okay this is a really short proof let's see the next corollary the next corollary is somewhat involved let f from 
ए बी टू सी डी बी रीमान इंटग्रेबल बी रीमान इंटग्रेबल एंड फी फ्रॉम सी डी टू आर बी कंटिन्यूस बी कंटिन्यूस देन फी कंपोज विथ एफ इज रीमान इंटग्रेबल इज रीमान इंटग्रेबल अगेन द करोलरी लुक्स अ बिट कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बट द प्रूफ इज वेरी ईजी प्रूफ लेट डी एफ be the set of discontinuities set of discontinuities of f then then the set of discontinuities set of discontinuities of v composed with f is a subset of df why is this true again because the composition of a fun two functions will be continuous at a point if f is continuous at that point and phi is continuous at f of that point so if you take a point of continuity of f then phi composed f will automatically be continuous at that point therefore the only point of discontinuity of phi composed with f will be a subset of df again think why i write subset and not equal to okay and we are done we are done because we are done because subsets subsets of measure 0 set on measure 0 for the same reason as the previous or measure 0 now i had rambled on a bit about why i want to prove the somewhat technical riemann lebesgue theorem saying that many many consequences will become fairly straightforward and i have demonstrated at least a few of them to make this demonstration even more potent i want you to sit down on a nice afternoon and try to prove 3 and 4 directly from the condition that a function is riemann integrable if and only if for each epsilon greater than 0 we can find a partition p such that ufp minus lfp is less than epsilon directly from that can you solve problems 3 and 4 and you will realize that the techniques that you use to prove 3 and 4 put together with a little bit of tweak can be used to prove the riemann lebesgue theorem itself so why not just prove the riemann lebesgue theorem and get it done for once and for all okay so that's one observation that i wanted to make let's move on with the corollaries number 5 if f from ab to r is riemann integrable is riemann integrable then so is so is mod f this is obvious because the modulus is a continuous function and you can treat uh, uh, modulus of f as absolute value composed with the function f and apply the previous corollary so it follows immediately 6 let a less than c less than b suppose suppose f from ab to r is riemann integrable is riemann integrable okay then so is so is f restricted to ac and f restricted to cb and integral of f a to b is just integral a to c f plus integral b to c, uh, c to b f okay again the proof of this is very easy proof okay uh, f restricted to ac and f restricted to cb are obviously riemann integrable obviously riemann integrable riemann integrable because because the set of discontinuities set of discontinuities discontinuities of each function 
would be a subset would be a subset of the set of discontinuities of f that is obvious okay so both functions will obviously be riemann integrable now observe that i can write f as f rest f into chi ac plus f into chi cb i can write the function f as a product of the function f and chi ac plus f into chi cb okay now with a little bit of thought it's now clear that integral integral a to b f is nothing but integral a to b f times chi ac plus integral a to b f into chi cb this just follows from linearity which we have established in an earlier module this is just linearity okay now the little bit of thought part comes now this is nothing but integral a to b f restricted to f restricted to ac plus integral a to b f restricted to cb so this is the part that requires little bit of thought when i say little bit i really mean little bit little bit of thought okay now the original proposition says it's integral a to c f plus integral c to b f that is rather easy to see integral a to b f restricted uh, integral a to b f restricted to ac is actually same as integral a to c f restricted to ac plus integral c to b f restricted to cb why please check why this is true again this also requires just a little bit of thought okay so we have now seen several consequences of the riemann lebesgue theorem none of them are particularly difficult except the last one which requires some thought but they are all straightforward and easy consequences of the riemann lebesgue theorem i hope you come out of this module feeling that the effort that was involved in understanding the riemann lebesgue theorem is certainly worth worth the hard work hope that you solve whatever bits that i have left for you this is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on consequences of the riemann lebesgue theorem